one of the main reasons why our society is being destroyed, I think one of the cause is ingratitude. Ingratitude is very dangerous. It can destroy an organization. It can destroy a nation. Ingratitude. People are not grateful. So you, you see people saying statements like, Papa Nyeshi, Aboni Nyeshi. The reason why people say that, such statements is because of ingratitude. Song Ada Nasela, Bimi Dasela. I think I'm translating um, in direct translation in front of him. Papa Nyeshi, Aboni Nyeshi. Anytime you hear people making such statements, then just know that it's as a result of ingratitude. The dangers of ingratitude. So when you read the Bible, in 1 Samuel 25, there was a very wealthy man. Listen to this story very well. There was a wealthy man, very wealthy. So this man, his name was Nabal. Nabal had a lot of possessions. When the Bible says somebody is wealthy or rich, then the person is rich. This man had a lot of possessions. One day, this man decided to share some of his wealth, his possession, with his workers, his servant. Then, a message came to this man. David sent his servant to this man and went and told the man that, I've heard that you are having party for your servant. This is David. When your animals were in the bush, your servants were grazing with your animals in the bush, I and my men, we took care of your servants in the bush. We made sure that none of the animals got lost. Hear me well. Those days, let us know that there were bad people also. So when David is emphasizing that none of the animals got lost, that means that there was a possibility that robbery cases and a lot of things were happening over there when you go to the bush. Or even other animals can, uh, predators can attack the sheep. And even the, what do you call it, the servants who are taking care of the sheep. David and his men protected this man, this, this Nabal, his servant, from the animals getting lost from predators taking advantage of the animals and then what they call the servant and not only that david and his men ensured that other people didn't invade and take the goods of this man they protected the self, uh, the shepherds and they protected the animal so when they heard that Naba was having a party david sent his servant about 10 of them in number go and tell this rich man that when he said i have heard that he's having a party when his servants were in the bush with us, we took care of the servant. We made sure none of the animals got lost and nothing happened to the servant. Tell him that anything he has, he can give his boys. So in modern terms, anything for the boys. Then the reply of Naba was that, Why shall I take my bread and my water and give to a man whom I know not? Whom I know not, I don't know where he's coming from. And not only that, that Nabal replied again and he said, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants these days that have break away from their masters. This is the reply the rich man called Nabal gave David. You see, ingratitude is the reason why people do evil. We know, but it's, we know that there are many factors that make people do evil. But this, this is one of the reasons why good people turn into evil people. Ingratitude. It turns good people to evil people. It is a privilege. I always tell people this. It is a privilege to give to the king when he is not yet in the palace. The best time to be a blessing to anybody is when they have not gotten to the peak of life yet. The best, the best time to be a blessing in that your friend's life is when they have not gotten to the throne yet. Naba didn't know that David is going to be a king or David was a king in the making. I knew if Naba knew that David is a king in the making, he would have even taken half of his goods and give to David and bless the life of David. A lot of people have lost their blessings because they didn't see a king in that young boy. They didn't see a queen in that young girl. They didn't see a big business and an, 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 an organization. They didn't see a multi-billion dollar business in that young business that was growing up in their neighborhood. It is a privilege, and I repeat again, it is a privilege to give to the king when he is not yet on the throne. It is a privilege to give to the king when he is not yet in the palace. Let me tell you, when God brings certain people around you, and it's like they have not gotten to their destination yet, 
it is a way God is telling you that invest now in them so tomorrow you will reap the benefit. This is the reason why people don't understand why pastors are getting blessed. Pastors get blessed because what? They invest in the life of people when they are not yet where they are. So some of the pastors, if you see many of the pastors that we jealous, we think that they are scamming people and then we give all sorts of comments we are giving. If you want to look critically into them, you will get to know that most of these pastors, they invested in children when they were yet in JSS, when they were yet in SHS, teaching them, guiding them through life, how to de- live their life, supporting them in their education, supporting them in their business, helping them with ideas, preaching to them, helping them in their marriages, and a lot of things. Then these people will now grow and become better adults. They focus, build organizations, build business and company. Then one day they just come, Pastor, I want to buy this car for you. Pastor, I want to buy this for you. It didn't just come on a silver platter. They invested. It is a privilege to give to the king when he is not yet in the palace or he is not yet on his throne. There are many kings in families, but they start as nobodies. We don't invest in these people. Then when they get to the throne, because let me tell you, the moment a king gets to the throne or the palace, it's difficult to get access. So this is where people complain. Eh, I was there, this pastor, well, he used to be in this area in his preach. One day somebody used to reverence it as an example. That we used to see him on the road, very slim with his Bible, and he'll be roaming around preaching. Hey, now look at these two. I say, hey, my papa, you are just mentioning his name like that. But why am I saying this? Today they are not able to get access and they are angry because they are not getting access. Every king is difficult to get access. If we don't follow protocol, you cannot get access to any king just like that. You must follow protocol. The only time you don't need to follow protocol is when they are not yet on the throne. How many kings are in that school with you? You have classmates who are kings in the making, but you are treating them anyhow. This was the biggest mistake of Naba. He treated David anyhow. First King 25. Naba treated David anyhow, but for God, he didn't know that this man was going to be a king. That character of yours, that you are, you are with people in an organization, then you are handling them anyhow. That character of yours, that you are, you, are, you are in the same church with somebody, you handle them anyhow. That character of yours, that you are in, um, let me say, in a class with somebody, that you handle them anyhow. Let me tell you this, you may be handling a king anyhow, and you will not know. That's the reason why you must treat people you meet in this path, on your path in life, as you are climbing the ladders in life. This is the reason why, whether in, it, in education, whether in school, whether in your own family, whether nuclear or extended family, or even in, in the market, or even that truck truck you sat in, that taxi you sat in, with that party you were in, that man or that woman you met, learn to treat everybody fairly and treat everybody right. Because you don't know that you may be handling a king or a queen in the making anyhow. And this has been my biggest secret. When I meet people, I make sure I treat them very well. And I make sure that I, I don't let them, I don't expose myself to them to let them know who I am. I am really. I'm not talking about maybe I'm bad and I'm hiding. No, I'm talking about I don't let them know I have this and I have that. You know that kind of bragging mentality. I have this, I have that. I mean, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I have this, I have that. No, no, no. See, and because of this, I have met people who have treated me very poorly. At the end of the day, later in life, when they realized the path that this young man was, they tried to reconcile. But that time, I have moved into another zone. So you see that to reach me on phone is very difficult. Then you be like, ah, eh, is it not Richard? We know Richard. I was in school with Richard. He was my classmate. Um, uh, we are all in the same family. We all worked in the same company and blah, blah, blah. You hear people passing that comment. They think that you can give them easy access because you worked before or because you were all in the same school before or because all of you once worked in a, a particular organization or you were all in a particular ministry before. So they think that doors will just be open for them automatically. How did you treat me when we were in school? How did you treat me when we were in that same class? How did you treat me when you, we met in that market? How did you handle me when we met in that job? How did you handle me when I was working with you? How did you handle me when I was in that ministry with you? How did you handle me when we met in, 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 in what they call it, that party? How did you handle me? 
you didn't treat me well you didn't handle me well today that you heard that i'm at the palace i'm in the throne then, then you expect me to give you or treat you give you a vip treatment it doesn't happen that way and i repeat it is a privilege to give to a king when he is not yet at the palace the best time to treat people well is when they are not yet at the palace when they have not arrived yet the best time to be a blessing to people is when they have not arrived yet look for people in that your family look for people in that organization the people you are working with look for people there and handle them well Nabal didn't know that David is going to be a king one day. I knew if Nabal knew that David was going to be a king and a very powerful and influential person on the plan, on the in, in what they call it in the in their generation, in their dispensation, at their era, uh, in that in that kingdom. I don't think that Nabal would have treated David that way. But Nabal treated David regardless because he the Bible even stated he was an evil man, he was evil in his dealings. And see, I love the Bible so much. Many people are making that same error today. There are people who are more treating people in the organization. They have power, position. They are misbehaving with it. Even some people in the family. Me, I've been a victim before. Extended family. How some of them dealt with me. I was so surprised. Somebody, I call you my uncle and you are dealing with me this way. Somebody, I call you. Not that I'm a stranger to you. We are all in the, in the same family. But they think that, you see, they have this mentality of, will, is there anything good that will come out of Nazareth? This person's children, will they even become somebody? Let me tell you, every young boy or young girl roaming around you, you don't know the destiny God has for them. Learn to treat people well. If you want to be, the, to be at the safer side of life, learn to treat people very well, regardless of who they are. This is Christian life. This is what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us to learn to learn how to entertain and welcome strangers. You don't know who people are. You don't need to know who somebody is before you treat them well. Just be good to people. There was a time that um, the first secular job I did in my life, like um, I, I worked, the first secular job I did, you know, all my life, it has been school and ministry, school and ministry. But the, the first secular work, like working an organization i met this hr who took me under his wings he gave me the opportunity and when this man gave me the opportunity i gladly accepted it later on in life that opportunity became bigger for me i, I moved out in life then i was there one day i got a message from me he needed assistance he needed help I was very happy to offer him that help because this was a man who once gave me an opportunity. This is ungrat this is uh, what do you call it? A sign of gratitude. But on ingratitude, ungratefulness, that kind of na that nature is what Naba had. Somebody who has been in the bush taking care of your animals, making sure that none of the animals get lost, none of your livestock get lost. At the end of the day, you had a party. They didn't even place demand. They said, anything you have, just give us. Naba refused to give David and his men. So what happened? David got angry. David took 400 men. They took their souls and they were about to storm where Nabal was having the party. They were about to storm Nabal's house and make sure that they destroyed everything Nabal had. Because what? Papa Nyeshi are Nyeshi. The reason why our country and our world, it seems that evil is on the rise, is because of this particular thing. When people do us good, let's show them gratitude. When people offers us offers help and a time comes that we need to also offer them any kind of help, let's learn to show gratitude. Ingratitude have destroyed destinies. Ingratitude have destroyed ministries. Ingratitude have destroyed families. Ingratitude have destroyed companies and businesses. Ingratitude have destroyed nations. People don't want to show gratitude to people. And when you are in a society where people who who do good things, they are not being rewarded. Many of those people tend to be evil people. That is it. 
a man once helped you then then at the end of the day you don't show any any let me tell you this this is the reason why they say police people like taking bribes and that yes i'm against bribe anytime i'm driving and i meet police people they have the whether they stop me or they don't stop me even more major most of the time they don't stop me i'll just lower my glass i'll say i buy color this and drink water sometimes i can be traveling let me say this tamale burger road and then when i get to majority of the checkpoints I, I can buy maybe bread i'll buy maybe oranges i'll buy even maybe sachets of water and these police people who are stationed at what you call this part of the road i can just say collect sachets of water collect oranges collect bread some of them i can just say oh, collect these 20 cities collect this 50 city i buy and i'll go they have not stopped me they have not asked me for anything and most of the time that's what i do when i'm moving around i make sure i have some small what you call change with me 20 maybe 30 40 50 cities no 10 10 cities 20 20 cities no i buy and collect buy water because these people who are protecting that look at where they are stationed especially when accra uh, burger to accra look at the road some bushes these men have left their family they are there we don't show them any no appreciation but let's wait when they arrest you that maybe you're something of a spy or maybe your tie has a problem they give you funny funny excuses and this is they say you must pay back before they allow you to move you get angry you say police people are corrupt police people are corrupt my question is the good police people when have you shown them gratitude before you see so that that policeman who is a good person performing his duties well and he's not being what do you call it appreciated meanwhile the the one we say he's a bad policeman he's taking money from people he's extorting taking bribes that man that policeman is doing very well in his life that policeman has been able to get a car for himself he's able to pay his bills when his salary comes he's able to do one or two things with his salary and the good policeman nobody ever appreciates him he relies solely on his salary everything you have to do with his salary ask me when, if not god if not the fear of god that good policeman will turn into a bad cop it's part of life when nobody didn't appreciate david in the bible first samuel 25 verse 2 read that whole story if you have not read it before when nobody didn't appreciate david david took his men they took sword 400 men they were marching papa and yeshua born in yeshua they were marching to to Naba's house to make sure that they destroy everything and even if they can confiscate the animals and go yes because papa and yeshua born in yeshua we are the reason why humans being behave the way they are if everybody learn how to show appreciation to people who have been good to them before imagine your phone got lost somebody found the phone brought that phone to you instead of appreciating the person tell the person thank you and the person will go another person will find that phone he will never return it he will go and sell the phone and then pocket it so the reason why our society is the way it is because the moment we as society stop appreciating good people look at our country ghana that we are in majority of the good people when have you seen that the president of the uh, the country is appreciating people who took heroic what they call it decisions and help people you don't hear of it maybe you see that's why the western world sometimes we see, the western world is doing better because what they are good in appreciating good people fire is burning somewhere and then maybe a neighbor in that place an immigrant or anybody went and then maybe helped rescue people they just give them either they give them automatic employment into the fire service or they absorb it into the what they call it some of the security services then the people work there we have some happening in africa maybe it's a car, car got accident people rush to the scene they help a lot of people we don't give them anything yes we must appreciate people thank you yes thank you is good but if you have the ability to appreciate somebody better do it because that act you you that step there you take that act you do will go a long way to transform the life of that person to become a better person in society ingratitude has caused a lot in ministries how many times you see all the time social media you see people lambasting good uh, bad pastors and uh, this pastor is taking consultation fee this pastor is doing this he's taking money from members he's arranging himself from members please you the one backing and making that noise when was that when was the last time you looked for a good preacher in a village or somewhere and you just 
the way you, you are going around looking for information about bad preachers and say i am exposing bad preachers i am here to correct what you call it the evil happening in the body of christ when have you gone out to also look for good preachers and appreciate them one day i was preaching in the church i told people one of the aim of get jesus ministry yes as a church building many branches is good but get jesus ministry my focus are not we will not we are not going to build plenty branches building branches is good but we are going to focus on the churches that already have branches in certain villages and they need assistance we will rather put our resources in helping some of those ministries those ministries may not have to be get jesus ministry my ministry they may those ministries may not have to be get jesus ministry and i'll say that okay this is my brand so let me buy them drums let me buy them instruments let me put up maybe a hundred seater church for them a 200 seater church no our focus will also be there may be an assemblies of god church somewhere that maybe the the main church is not aware of there may be a, a, a pentecost church in a particular village that a pastor needs support and assistance there may be a fountain gate church in a village and the pastor is struggling need assistance need training need support need a hundred seater church a 200 seater church get jesus ministry we want to provide for these churches it shouldn't always be my church my denomination it shouldn't always be my branches as a young preacher, I know that the, mo the moment I put up plenty branches, I'll need resources to, let, let me say, provide infrastructure, providing instruments, and a lot of things for those branches. So you see that financially I may be constrained. I will not be able to impact other men of God in other denominations who are also in certain villages or community and they are struggling. So God laid it in my heart that such vision I must carry it out. That I will go to a particular, look for a particular village, go and look for the man of God there. What do they need? Instrument, get it for them. Drums, get it for them. Evangelism equipment, get it for them. At a low budget, put put up maybe a hundred or two hundred seater for them, because there are a lot of genuine men of God struggling in the village. But you know something? Ingratitude. People don't appreciate them. So when they hear that a man of God is not taking oil, he will mix perfume inside and tell somebody, come, let me show you a country. And they say, I'll charge you 200 CD. Gather those 200, 200 CD because people will pay for that. When they, take, when they have the sense of an oil who, which is having nice perfume scent or aroma, they think that that oil is very powerful. So they will pay 200 CD for it. So that good man of God will also, dis, will also start selling oil. So he can make money, feed the family, feed the children, and continue the ministry. So you see, ingratitude, people that are not appreciated, somebody who is a good preacher have, have not turned into a, a bad man of God. Because what? He saw that if I'm going to do the thing genuine, nobody will appreciate my effort. So let me also buy the, uh, anointing oil, mix it with some two CD perfume, and the scent will be nice. And I'll tell people, take this one. It's a very powerful oil coming from India. Very powerful oil coming from... Um, uh, uh, let me say Israel when you use it things are going to work for you bring 200 Ghana bring 300 Ghana they'll take monies and then begin to also feed their family so this how bad a bad preacher who is not able to stand the test of time can get corrupt then we come and say man of God this is selling oil in village this and that He's selling red eggs, white eggs, and he's not making money from the members. They tell you, Christians, wake up, oh, wake up, wake up. Please, how many good, good men of God have you appreciated? So that they will know that the good preaching they are doing, the, two, the good teachings they are doing, they should keep up with that because good also pay. We are in a society that we have made it so much, we have made it like evil pays and good doesn't pay. So nobody wants to be good. Everybody wants to be evil. Everybody wants to be evil because they think evil pays. And the society has made it that way. If you're a Christian watching me, if you're a true believer of Christ, if you are somebody who wants to see society turn from their evil ways and be good, if you want to see changes in that church, if you want to see changes in that organization, if we want to see changes in our country, let's learn to appreciate good. But when we don't appreciate good, evil will always dominate. Yeah. I know pastors who appreciate people that they are some way and the way people doing the work especially you know i've been you see let me tell you this 
You see, men of God who are mostly around the prophets of God, there are some group of people who are always around the man of God. They work when the man of God is around. And when the man of God is around, they do terrible things. But as men of God, if you don't watch from afar and you want to watch closer, you will never fish those people out. So the real people doing work. So sometimes, man of God, just go to church early or just go and hide somewhere. Watch the people after church. They will arrange the chairs, they will clean, they will do that. Yes, so because see, men of God, the people that are doing giddy, 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 and papa, this one day, one of my sons, I was talking to a phone. I said, You see what this guy did? I was, I was not talking about how one of my sons, what one of my sons did to me. And I said, You see what he did? And he screamed at the phone. He said, Hey, this is very serious. Even me, papa, me, I will never agree and then say that. Me, why? Because I was watching from afar, I knew the things he had been saying in his heart and he had been saying to people. I knew it. The things he had said to people around. I just rebuked him when I told him, I see, even that guy who did that to me, you will even do worse. Like a prophecy. Indeed, this guy even did worse than the one he was complaining on the phone. Oh, Papa, me, I cannot do this. Papa, me, don't know. Why should he do that? That is so serious. Men of God, let's be careful. We may award and reward certain people who are around us and we are seeing them to be hardworking. And then we we'll forget about the people who are really doing the hard work in the church. That's how comes a church. You see a church that is vibrant, doing very well. And one day you just see that the good people have left the man of God, leaving the bad ones. And when the work is left for the bad ones, they can't do it. So that's to tell you that it was certain people who were keeping things running, but they were not seen and they were not appreciated. So men of God, let's learn this. All the people that are running around, they want to, and they are around. It's like they want to bodyguard us. And it's like uh, they are around. When we are around, they are giving instructions and direction. And we think they are sweating. We think they are working. See, there are some people that are even working more. You have not even heard of their name. They are in the church. Let's face those people. Out. And I said, the only way you can see, get those people and appreciate them well is to watch from afar. Don't watch closer. Do odd things. Go to church sometimes odd hours. That sometimes let them think that you have traveled for a program somewhere. Meanwhile, you are around and they don't know you are around. And observe. How let them have the notion that you have gone for a program somewhere. Yes. Sometimes you can be even go and be in a hotel, do a live video, tell them, and, and be like, Oh, I am currently here and I'm doing a uh, uh, we are having this and that. I came to do one or two things. Meanwhile, you are just around. You are in one of the offices. And then see how service go on. See how meetings are handled. See how some of the members are handled. It will tell you something. There are people working secretly. And most of the time, good people, they don't want to be seen. They want, that's one of the things. Good people don't want to be seen. Somebody who is just doing it because of, for the sake of God, they don't want to be seen. They don't want anybody to see them that, oh, I am doing good. No, 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 no. Because the thing is that they are not doing to be recognized. But please, learn to appreciate them. Fish them out and appreciate them. This is the only way that we can stop evil and stop evil. So that is, that, is, that is just, by the way, one of the dangers of ingratitude. It breeds evil people. It breeds evil people. So David was on his way going to destroy all what Nabah had. Then there was a woman Nabal was married to call Abigail. Abigail, head of the news. One of Nabal's servants, the evil man, the rich man who said, Who is David? Now, now there are servants who have break away from their master. And I remember when I started Get Jesus Ministry, some people were passing comments. And nowadays there are servants who have break out from their master, just like what David was saying. Nabal, you don't know why David was running for his life. Saul was looking for David to kill. Many servants have left their masters because their masters were looking for them to stop that gift, stop that calling in their life. See, let me tell you this. The reason why some, some can, many countries got independence was because of the way they were treated. I remember when Prophet Manasseh Sakodie, the senior prophet, when this man of God, this mighty man, let's see what he's doing in Pram Pram. When this man of God started ministry, he got a lot of attacks from everywhere. 
that story is past now. Things are everything has been solved, it has been reconciled. I'm just using that as a key study. There were some men of God who disassociated themselves from Prophet Nana Sarkodie. Yes, they disassociated themselves, saw him as a rebellion. And this man was left alone. Just like Naba. Who is David that will support him? Nowadays, there are servants who have break away from their masters. Today, let's see what, what God is using the man to do. I want to, I want to let you understand this thing. See, before somebody will cry for independence or a country will cry for independence, it's based on some few things. Either they are not being treated fairly. Ghana got independence. Do you think if the British, the colonies were treating Africa well, do you think that we would not have let them go? Ah, uh, they are giving everything you need. They treat you the same like how they are. Like they don't destroy your things. Like they are treating they tr they are treating Ghana, ruling Ghana like how they are ruling their own country. Do you think we would have cried for independence? Ghana would have never Africa would have never cried for independence. But Africa was treated unfairly. That's why many of the countries cried cried out for independence. There are some people, let me tell you this. There are some people who break out. They break out of ministries out of because of personal gains. I don't sideline with those people. People who want what they, they, they will chop. They are thinking of their stomach. And then all the help and assistance that have, have been given to them, they don't care because they are thinking about their own stomach. Forget about those people. Those people, they don't know what they are doing. And whatever decision they make out of stomach gains, I want to eat, I want to chop, and as money is ministry. And if I start my own business, I'll do well. Let me stop my boss business. And then my boss is making money, he's not giving me enough money. Meanwhile, they don't know the debt the boss is paying. They don't know the loan the boss is paying. Forget about those workers and those staff. I'm talking about people that people live based on number one, selfish benefit. Forget about them. Some live because they are being treated unfairly. And people won't leave because they have been not being treated well, or their life is at stake, or their destiny and their gift is at stake. Those people are not rebellious. But we, we, we gather all those people as rebellious people. So they said, so, but now look at Prophet Nana Sarkozy. They said all these things. See, when you don't know the head and tail of a story, or a, 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 where the battle is coming from, don't just join. Because you may join from the wrong side. There are many men of God who started. Look at the, those who started the revolution. Look at those who started many, the Panian many revivals. They saw all those people to be rebellious. Even Martin Luther was saw as a rebellious man. But let's look at the enlightenment the man brought to the body of Christ. If not that man today, I and you will not even know just to be justified by faith and then. Look at those who translated the word of God so that we can, so that the word of God will not be like it's a personal property of some people and not everybody will know the mind of God. That was the most serious slavery. Today, the word of God is in English. Everybody can read it. You know what God is saying. Some people kept their life on the line. And those people were being regarded as rebellious. They are really regarded as people who are break away from their masters. <laughs> so now, let me tell you. The man saw David to be a rebellious guy. Not knowing he was speaking to a king. I pray you will not treat anybody unfairly. And one day you see them and bow your hair down in shame. Don't join any battle you don't understand. Else one day, you see people and you bow down your head. A lot of people are now bowing down their head when they see the man of God, Prophet Nana says, according. Some are bowing down their head when they see me, Richard Atambi, because they treated me unfairly. Some are bowing down their head when they see certain great men of God and see certain great people today because they treated them like how, how Nabal treated them. I call it the Nabal treatment. Nabal treatment, it doesn't it doesn't know how to appreciate good people. Naba treatment doesn't know how to recognize kings and, and then learn how to recognize great people who have potential and connect to their source, connect to their story and then their, what they call their success journey. I pray that I pray for you. May God open your eyes that you'll be part of somebody's success journey. I pray for you that may God open your eyes and your heart. That you will not criticize, you will not stab, you will not, you will not bury, you will not crush somebody who is going to be a king in the making. I pray for you. A lot of people have become successful and then they don't want to turn their eyes to the family because what? Family treated them poorly and outsiders people accepted them very well. A lot of people don't have, they don't want to hear the name of their former boss again because their former boss treated them poorly. It took somebody who held them. 
And now, see, the people who now want to claim ownership of these people are those people who didn't treat them fairly. You abandon somebody in your family. The person went outside to the ghettos. And then the ghettos accepted the person. Some people don't understand Shatawali because of this. I'm a man of God. But after following Shatawali's story for some time, I understood one thing about them, that young man. Some people don't understand the story of Shatawali because what? This man was abandoned by certain people. Even family abandoned this young man. It took certain people who held him down. And today, certain people want to claim ownership of this young man. Meanwhile, they abandoned him at the initial stage. I have been a victim of this. And let me tell you something. If not God, you see the behavior that man is having. If God doesn't step in very well, he's going to have some kind of bitterness and resentment against certain people forever in his life. So you hear people say, eh, he's not supporting family. He's not caring about family. You hear people say, his friends, he doesn't care about his friends. I was in school with him. We all started this music thing together. We all started this thing ministry together. We all started this particular business together. Now he has forgotten about He has abandoned. You didn't treat him well. You treated him like Nabal in First Samuel chapter 25, the verse 2. That story, you treated me like Nabal. The time he needed you, the time he came from you for help, you abandoned this young man. But now that this young man or this young woman have hustled in life and found his part in life, you want to claim ownership. And he's not helping us. He's not supporting us. What did you do for him when he needed help? Some ministries want to claim ownership of certain people, which they never played any role in their life. Let me tell you this. Never try it in your life. You want to claim certain things. You, like, you feel this this kind of, they must support me, they must give me this, they must give me this. Because we are from the same family. Because I know the mother, I know the father, his brother and sister, we are connected together. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's change the narrative. As Christians, as people who go to church, please, let's learn how to appreciate people. Let's learn to be good to people. Let's learn to support people in our ministries and organizations. Let's learn it. Let's learn when to be grateful to good people so that they will continue doing the good things they are doing. Let's appreciate good so that evil will not continue dominating. Let's let people learn that evil does not pay by appreciating good when people do good to us. Let's appreciate them so they will not, and then let's not appreciate them when they do evil so they know evil does not pay and good rather pays. The dangers of ingratitude. We can continue with this topic and go and go and go. But this is where I would like to put it to an end. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to discover good people and be a blessing to them. I pray that you will never abandon a young boy, a young girl, a young person who is yet trying to find their foot's place in this life. I pray that you will never abandon them and that you will be part of their success story. In Jesus' mighty name, peace. Shalom. Bye-bye. Follow us on YouTube and all social media platforms at Pastor Richard Atambiri. Do not forget to share, like, and comment. God bless you.